yo, what's happening, people? Okay, then. So, I wasn't going to let you guys just sit and wonder what's going to happen with Bitcoin. It is the weekend, but just keeping an eye on price action, I thought I'd give you a late night update on what to expect in the next few hours com and coming into tomorrow. Now, if you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe at the end of the video. All right. So, what's been going on? What are we likely to see next? Now, there is speculation across the board, okay? Let's just put things into perspective. What are people thinking about Bitcoin right now? So, the key way to find out exactly where people are at with Bitcoin is to do the following, okay? Let's just pause this bad boy, type in Bitcoin. Let's do what everyone else does, and let's have a conversation about what people are talking about. So, we can see Bitcoin's hash rate is at an all-time high. What does this mean? Okay. That could be relevant. Manipulation, Bitcoin crash, getting early. Okay, the metaverse is starting to roll out. Things are about to get interesting. Okay, Ethereum fork. All right, I've been surprised. Fair enough. This guy. <laughs> wow, this guy. I'm surprised he hasn't got a cramp in his jaw, man. Look, he's, he's even flexing his jaw out. Fair play to you, bro. Bitboy Crypto, urgent Bitcoin alert. Eric Crypto pump signal appears. Okay, fair enough. Crypto holders, big move coming. Bitcoin 8% crash will start within the next 15 days. And that was two weeks ago. Okay. End of meta. All right, then. So you can pretty much work out exactly what the general consensus is across the board. All right. When people come to like various other channels, they're working out, you know, where is Bitcoin going to go? People, when they come to YouTube, they're looking for direction. All right. Ain't we all? We're all trying to establish direction. All right. This is the wrong place to come. That's a bit rich me saying that. Should you even listen to what I'm saying to you? No. Do your own research. Okay. Now, there's nothing wrong in going into YouTube and trying to find out from everyone else's perspective. And then you're able to come up with a general consensus about what is going to happen with Bitcoin. But the truth of the matter is this, ladies and gentlemen, the only place you need to be looking is right here, right on the tip of what is going on in price, which is right here in this area. This is where you look. Nowhere else. Whatever anyone says about Bitcoin, the only thing that you can do is come here. And if you are a trader, if you are new to trading or you're a seasoned trader, you only need to be observing what's happening now. For entertainment purposes, ladies and gentlemen, of course, YouTube does provide you that. Sometimes we want to go and watch other YouTube creators, you know, for entertainment. Some of them have got some bad boy breakdowns and put things into perspective, you know. But quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen, we have to come back to price. So that leads me on to the next question. What is Bitcoin going to do next? Well, in order to answer that question, we need to ask, what is Bitcoin doing right now? And how much of right now are we seeing? And how often is it appearing? Do you understand what I'm saying? What I'm trying to get at, ladies and gentlemen, is this. What do you see more of? right now what do you see more of that's been happening in other words are we seeing pushes to the upside or are we seeing pushes to the downside what do you see more of and when you understand what you see more of then you can start to build a consensus idea in the sense where you can improve the chances of a trade playing out based on you collating together as many confluences as possible. And even then, even if you do have all the confluences into, into one pot, that doesn't mean it's going to play out. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, that's the harsh truth of trading. Whether you like to believe it or not, there is no such thing as being able to collate a number of confluences. So if you have a checklist of 20 confluences that need to come into play before you actually take a trade, guess what? 21 of them can all line up and the trade will not go in your favor you have to be okay with that ladies and gentlemen because ultimately it doesn't mean the more confluences the more chance that your trade is going to play out now nah. you can have a 20 list confluence okay 
and three of them can come into play and that could be the best trade of your life. See what I'm saying? There are no guarantees in trading. No matter how often someone is speaking about where they think price is going to go, if they speak about it enough and then it happens, then there's this false sense of prophecy in their minds where they would say to themselves, if I just keep talking about it and hopefully it happens, I'm a genius. No, that's not how trading works, ladies and gentlemen. In order to understand where price is likely to go, we have to start off on where we assume we are in the cycle. What do you determine as the cycle? What time frame are we considering the cycle on? Are you basing your cycle on the daily chart? Yeah. Are you basing your cycle on the one hour, on the 15, 15 minute time frame, 20 minute time frame, weekly time frame? Everyone has a different perspective on which cycle we are in, in the yearly cycle, like monthly, where are we at? What kind of cycle are we in there? Because frankly, ladies and gentlemen, there is no cycle on the monthly chart. All right. Now, this is Bitcoin perpetual futures. If we go back to Bitcoin in time when it got when it first became Bitcoin. So if we actually turn to BTC USD, all right, and just put it down like that. You know, we don't really get that much trading history. Bitcoin back in the day was just going up and down, up and down to between eight, nine thousand, you know, in this range right here. Nothing interesting. Bitcoin doesn't even have a 50 EMA on the monthly time frame. Yes, we are in the infantile infantile stages of Bitcoin on the monthly time frame. This looks like it's just been listed on pancake swap and it's just had an injection of liquidity and it's moved to the upside. <laughs> this is exactly what Bitcoin looks like on the monthly. Yeah. If someone was to take a snapshot of this chart right now with no indication of what the coin was and you were to ask people name this coin. Well, they would look at it and say, oh, it looks like a, it looks like a sh uh, an altcoin. Yeah, it looks like a coin on pancake swap or ba bakery swap. No one would have a belief that this was Bitcoin, especially on the monthly time frame. So what does that mean? What, what, what relevance does that have? What I'm saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, we don't have enough information on Bitcoin to understand truly what it's going to do next. And I don't care. There isn't enough information. How can we have enough information on what Bitcoin's going to do next on the daily time frame when we're looking at the monthly and there's nothing there? We're in the adoptive phases in cryptocurrency, ladies and gentlemen. Now, whether Bitcoin's going to go to 100K or not, frankly, we need to be paying attention to what Bitcoin is doing right now and what zone can it break out of right now. That is your priority as a trader. As a holder, different story. As a holder, you shouldn't even be looking at price. You just need to be in, in acceptance that you hold Bitcoin, finished, that is it. Don't even bother with YouTube. Don't even bother with TradingView. Don't even tell anyone you've got crypto. As a holder, your goal is just to hold on to it and leave it because you believe in the bigger picture. You are the enthusiast. You're the person that believes that whatever's going on in the world of crypto, you are holding on to this coin and it doesn't matter what happens. You have a vested interest, whether it's at 66K or if it goes all the way down to 14K. Quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen, Bitcoin can pull off these sort of cycles. And the sad truth is, is the what? <laughs> Excuse me. The sad truth is this. Bitcoin can go up. It can go down, it can continue, and it can do this for the next 5, 10 years. It won't matter. Why? Because people will always buy it, people will always sell it. And that is the basis of the market. All right? People are always trying to second guess the direction. I mean, that's exactly what we're doing. Let's, let's be honest now, ladies and gentlemen. Isn't this what we're doing right now? So the only way that you can really work out what Bitcoin is going to do next is you need to establish what your goal is with trading. OK, now we've got the luxury of looking on many time frames to establish Bitcoin's direction. Pick a time frame, make it your base time frame and then look at lower time frames to understand what it's doing in relation to your time frame that you are show that you have chosen. For example, if you focus mainly on the daily time frame, all right. I, I, I'm, I'm seeing some really, really funny things, man. Like I'm, I'm seeing, I'm seeing like these, these cool patterns. Um, how do you draw them? Yeah. 
these things. I mean, no discredit to anyone. Um, and then you've got these, this little line right here. Um, yeah. So the market makers business model, okay? The basis of liquidity is being provided and people are committing money left, right and center. All right. And the journey that price is going to take is solistically off this sort of pattern that I'm seeing being drawn across the board. Hmm. So the market makers business model is really cheap in the sense where I just need to draw a flag. That is really what I need to draw. I just need to draw one of these bad boys. I have my strategy, ladies and gentlemen. It's the Super Mario flag. Yeah? And there's the castle right there. The victory. Happy days. We want the Super Mario castle. That's what it is. Because this is what is being taught to traders worldwide. These pennants, these patterns and what have you. Fine. Okay. 60% win rate. Not even that. I don't want to be involved in a business or in an industry where the opportunity for me to generate a return from it is against me already by simply believing that a pattern like so is going to play out. I mean, it's all over the place, guys. The principle is this price comes into this and then when it gets really compressed, it's going to start moving and then bang, it moves up and then guess what? It comes back down again. So you waited all that time for this little flag to play out, for you to only realize a little bit of a return and you hold on to that because as a retail trader, you're stuck in the mind that this pattern gets played out across the board and everyone's looking at this pattern and they've been using it over and over and over again and guess what? You're the trader that provides the liquidity for the for the for the market maker who decides to go long from this point and realizes the return and creates his shorts by using your liquidity because you entered in this sort of play. What I'm trying to get at, ladies and gentlemen, is this. Everyone has got their own way of studying the market. But unless you pay attention to the way the business works, there is no point in drawing anything on any chart. It's irrelevant. You can't say to me that this business, okay, which everybody knows is managed. I'm not going to say the word manipulated because because we don't understand how it works fully, okay, we claim that it's manipulated. Quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen, we are a product of management. Human behavior doesn't change, all right? That's why price rises and that's why it falls. It doesn't change, ladies and gentlemen. Why? Because in this point right here in the chart, we are at our most euphoric. At this point in the chart, we are our most fearful. This point, euphoric. This point, fearful. This point, euphoric. This point, fearful. It's the same thing happening over and over again. And you're telling me a pattern like this is going to eliminate all of that. And it's going to give you the go ahead as to where price is going to go next. Frankly, ladies and gentlemen, I would hate to insult the market makers business model on that basis. Okay. What I'm trying to get at, guys, is this. You have to understand why price moves in one direction against the next. You have to understand how it operates. In order for price to rise, the transaction of a buy has to be matched with a sell. You can't buy if no one is selling and no one is selling, you can't buy. It's basic economics, but people have it wrong. It just doesn't make sense why people would believe when price is rising, it's because the buyer is in control. No, he's not. How can he be in control? The buyer will always have money. If he's got no one to sell to, sorry, if he's got no one to buy it from, he's going to be a buyer. That's all he can be. Likewise, a seller. When price is dropping, the sellers are not in control. No, the sellers are the result of the actions of the buyers because in order to sell, someone has to buy. Where in this pattern does it show you 
that the buyers and the sellers are formulating a battle. You're, where are you able to establish the relationship between who's really in control in this area? Yeah? Now, some people will say, yeah, but Tina, the pendant cycles and, you know, all these, you know, the bull flags and the bear flags, bear traps and what have you, you know, they do have their place. You know what? Quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen, I am not going to base any of my trading decisions on the idea of those patterns. That's not that I dis disregard them. It's I don't think any market maker uses them. I don't think they do. I've not seen in, in the history of where I've studied and tried to find out what patterns do the market makers use. If they don't even use charts. They don't use candlesticks. Nah, they don't use candlesticks. If anything, at a push, they may use a line chart. And that's just, you know, <laughs> that's them just saying, yeah, you know, I might need a little bit of a graphical representation. Nah, the market maker does things a little bit differently. Okay. He's not interested in the pa in the patterns that we see, ladies and gentlemen. All right. There's only one pattern that we actually pay attention to in this channel, and that is the M's and the W's. Why? Because they are linked to the psychology of traders. All right. You may or may not have been aware that during the streams, I pull up certain information or a certain platform that you guys may be familiar with. And we call that the book map, which is right here. This is probably what the market maker is watching. He's looking at the order flow. He doesn't care about penance. He doesn't care about all these patterns, even the M's and the W's, ladies and gentlemen. All he's interested in is where's the money coming from and what's it trying to do? That's what the market maker is interested in. Right now, we can see that there is a lot of liquidity between 48,800 and 48,600. That's where the liquidity is at. If we zoom out a little bit more, we're going to understand where the true money is at. Now, I'm waiting for it to load up. But you can see that there was liquidity at 51. It probably still is there, but the chart's loading up. What I'm trying to get across to you, ladies and gentlemen, is don't come to trading with the idea that this pattern okay amongst any other pattern that is out there is going to be the reason that's going to turn you into a very successful trader because the business model is not that naive okay you can't just make that assumption you have to understand the intention you have to understand what happens in the market i mean look guys they're making it easier for us yeah let me show you something and you've seen me talk about this many a times guys many a times all right this is a company alameda research this is a market maker guy guys <laughs> this is a market maker all right look at their strategies man our trading strategies which range from simple, such as mean reversion, to complex, such as machine learning. We provide liquidity in all major coins, derivatives and altcoins on the top 35 exchanges. Do we, do we need to, you know, like, we provide liquidity in all major coins. Okay, go check out who they are. Look how basic their website is. These guys run the show and they're one of the guys that run the shows. We have sophisticated trading algorithms, fast acting traders, an institutional grade OTC RFQ system, fiat support, and near universal coverage of cryptocurrency products. This allows us to trade hundreds of millions of dollars per day, accessing all of the major sources of flow and liquidity. This allows us to show tight spreads for large size consistently. In other words, that is where they make their money. Market makers trade in the spread. They trade in here. Inside. When you zoom in, See this little range here? That's where the market maker makes his money. Inside there. 
We're the guys that buy and sell here. We sell at this point and we buy at this point. He's already made that money on that transaction already. So, what's the point of me going on about this? I just want to put these, in, these things into perspective for you, ladies and gentlemen. When you are coming to working out where is Bitcoin going to go next, as we just saw by Alamada Research, okay? However way, whatever way you pronounce it. One of their simple strategies is mean reversion. What do we talk about all day, every day? What is price doing in relation to the 50 EMA? Why is it every time you look at the 50 EMA on the chart, go back in the chart. Every time it pulls away from it, it goes back to it. Why? Why does it do that? Because it incorporates volatility and momentum. Money's coming in. They bring it back because it's the belief that if it comes back to that point, the money's going to step in again. <clears throat> yeah? What can we expect from Bitcoin now? Nothing. Why have an opinion on Bitcoin? What's it doing? It's just ranging out. We could make the assumption on the basis of what are they doing around key areas. So we could pull up the 50K zone. We could pull up the 48K zone, which is where it's at right now. Not so much at that point, but we need to pull up that zone, 48. And in between 48, we've got 49. So what's the market maker doing in relation to his price action? What's actually going on? Is he building longs? Is he building shorts? They are stuck in between the psychological range. Currently, it's calculating. Right now is the time where they are establishing the psychological high and low. I always mention it on the Sunday because they're not finished with it yet. Yeah? This is no time to be trading. Price has recovered the vector candle. Yep, that's fine. But quite frankly, what you need to be aware of is the behavior around key notable areas which will give you the clues to what the market maker is doing. Always ask yourself, if you are seeing him hit a particular zone frequently and not following through with the direction of the zone he's hitting, he's preparing for something else. I hope this video has put things into a little bit of perspective for you, ladies and gentlemen. Mad love and respect to all my guys that use these bull flags and patterns and what have you. I've never, I, 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 you know, it's just not for me. You know, I just mad love and respect for you guys. If you can utilize this in your trading, happy days. Fair play to you. It's just not for me. That doesn't mean that they can't be useful. Some people are making a killing off them. Happy days. But for me, it's all about understanding what the market maker is going to do next. That's my 100% that's my goal. Have yourselves a lovely weekend, guys, and I will catch up with you in tomorrow's stream. Mad love and respect to you guys. Peace.